We're back with another Money Diary series and this month will be coverage for June. In this Money Diary series, I usually share with you guys my breakdown of my income, fixed expenses, variable expenses, any income related to the side hustle on YouTube, etc. So today's video will be entirely about that. In my budgeting spreadsheet, if you're interested in that, it'll be listed on coffee, denominated in SGD. I've actually changed from buy me a coffee to coffee because it's denominated in SGD. Easier for you guys. On coffee, you can look for my budgeting spreadsheet, my net worth spreadsheet and also my emergency funds guide. Now let's dive straight into my spreadsheet this month. We will go into my income first. I know that it's pretty interesting for you. This month, my entire income makes up to a total of $11,599.34. Yes, I know that is a lot, but all of it has its own breakdown, which I will cover. My main income comes in to close to $3,000, my take-home pay. A little bit of an announcement is that I will not be receiving my main source of income from the month of July onwards. I have left my day job, but I'm not going content creation full-time. I'm actually exploring something else, which I will update you guys once things stabilizes. The second income to that is my bond interest and dividends. For those of you who have followed along, I do invest in corporate bonds and that is where I receive some form of interest income and I'm building up my REITs portfolio, Singapore Real Estate Investment Trust, in order to build up the dividends that comes in every quarter and that will be the passive income I'm looking to build. In total this month is $134.40 and this breakdown of bonds actually came from the Astral corporate bonds that I've held, giving a return of 3.85% and the semi my annual dividends this month is at $38.39 and thereafter there's also the Singapore Savings Bond which I've bought into in December giving a return of 3.47% and that gave me $65.20. The rest of it came from the dividends that I've invested into the Singapore REITs. As I mentioned in my investing videos, I'm actually trying to build up a dividend income portfolio. So by having dividends that is coming in, it will eventually become a passive income from me. I received four dividends this month which became a total of $30.00. And 81 cents. So in total this month, I received $134.40 in the interest and dividend portion. Bank interest is at $28.27. And in my bank interest, I don't actually stash a lot of it into the bank accounts. Instead, I actually stash it into other areas, which I have a video covering where I'm stashing all my spare cash. If you're interested in that, I'll link up above and down below as well. For cashback this month was a total of $123.41. And the cashback bulk of it is actually not based on my expenditures. My father is using my Yo be absolute Amex card to pay for certain things and the cashback that came in from there is quite big which he doesn't use as well so it's an additional add-on to me I guess so cashback a total of $123.41 the HSBC Revolution credit card I'm using that to actually clock for the mouse so I did not redeem the cashback the rest of the cashback came from Yobi Evo and also HSBC Advance the cashback tracker table over here Yobi Absolute Amex $70 not my expenses Yobi Evo close to $40 which I also talk about it's a great credit card to use if you can hit the $600 minimum spending HSBC Revolution keeping the points so I'm not redeeming that for cashback HSBC Everyday Account this month is at $10.94 so if you pair the HSBC Revolution with the HSBC Everyday Global Savings Account, you're getting an additional 1% and this month it was at $10.94. HSBC Advance, $1.36, so total is $123.41. And YouTube income is at $8,154.76. Again, a clause here is that every month it fluctuates. There's no specific like minimum that I would get from YouTube every single month, but I'll share with you guys the breakdown. So this month it could be good. Next month, I'm only projecting $1,000 from YouTube. So that is something that you guys will see every month when I cover my Money Diary series, it actually fluctuates quite a bit. So it's not consistent income. This month is just better because thanks to you guys who use the links and the products that I've mentioned, I personally do use them as well. I won't advertise on products that I don't personally use and I feel will help you guys in your own personal finance journey because it has helped me. So when I talk about Momo, when I talk about Scythe Trade, when I talk about Weibo, are platforms that I personally use and invest on and that is why I can share with you guys. You treat the referral that I've gotten, if you have signed up with you, trip I get five dollars every time a person signs up and do their first top up so in total four people have actually signed up using my link and if you're looking for a multi-currency card to travel with you overseas instead of using your credit card I talk a lot about this on the channel I'll link the playlist up above and down below please don't use your credit cards when you spend overseas so you trip this month is twenty dollars YouTube AdSense revenue for the month of May is at two hundred and ninety two dollars and forty cents and with this income I'm planning to use this two hundred and ninety over dollars every single month my AdSense revenue that come in I will put it into the S&P 500 this is 
something new that I want to try and work it out, see in the long run as my YouTube AdSense revenue increase and I use it all to invest into the S&P 500, what the returns will be in two year period or five year period time frame. I'm excited to see how this will grow. BMAC and Coffee is the platform where I list my spreadsheets, my budgeting spreadsheet, my net worth spreadsheet and also my emergency funds full guide. The net worth spreadsheet is at $10, the budgeting spreadsheet is at $15. It's a one-time purchase and anytime I do an update to all of these, those who have purchased prior, you'll get it for free. Those who have purchased in 2022, 2023's version of the annual budgeting spreadsheet, I've actually sent it out to you guys and it will go the same for 2024 as well. Free updates for a lifetime. In total, I've received $1,076 but this is not all from the budgeting spreadsheets. Actually, someone signed up for the coaching, one-to-one -one coaching. Every single week, we meet for 30 minutes and we'll talk about anything personal finance related. This is something that's available on my channel. I don't advertise this or market this. If you're looking for someone to help you one-to-one -one on your personal finance journey, this is something I offer. You can look at coffee or buy me a coffee where I place the price and how much it'll cost, what it entails, etc. I'm not gonna dive into that. I don't market that as well. Trust Bank referral is something that has been coming in because I talk a lot about Trust Bank being better than Utrip in certain ways. Pros and cons, both of it, I'll link up above and down below for the videos talking about this too. But the Trust Bank referral vouchers came up to a total of $1,036 and the rest of it are actually affiliate sign up. So when you guys sign up using my links for investment platforms, for credit card signups, I do get certain kickback as well and that is how we've maintained and funnel this channel. So every single YouTuber out there have their affiliate links where you can use to sign up and in a way support them at no cost to you and in total that makes up the rest of the YouTube income that comes in. Yes, it is a lot but you need to understand that being a YouTuber, a content creator, an influencer or anything that you call what we're doing, the income that comes in fluctuates a lot. So this month it could be a lot. Next month as I was looking at how my things will perform, no main income coming in for my YouTube income alone is not going to be a lot. Probably a thousand over dollars. This month is a lot just because I run certain promotions and there were a lot of people who actually are interested in it. I only work with brands that I personally use. So take for example, Mumu Singapore platform. I use them to invest into the Singapore stock market. And it's what I talk a lot about on this channel because they're giving you the free commissions for one year when you sign up with my link down in the description box below. I'm using that to trade in the Singapore stocks and that gives me a cheaper platform to trade and invest into the stock market today. Safe Trade is another platform I use to invest into the US stock market and it's also what I talk a lot about on this channel. They're giving you two free trades per month in the US stock market and it's what I'm using to invest into the S&P 500. The links that I've included down in the description box below guaranteed are only platforms that I personally do use like Stash Away, Fixed Deposit, 3.5%. There are brands who reach out and I don't feel comfortable sharing and that is why I don't go ahead with them. So rest assured, I will only talk about brands which I personally use and find it helpful in every individual's personal finance journey. After the YouTube income, there is also the other section which in this month, if you're a Singaporean, you would have received some money from the government and I received $200. So that makes up for my entire income in June. And now let's go to my fixed expenses. So fixed expenses this month is pretty high because in June, every single year, I'm paying for my annual hospital premium and also my accident plan premium. That amounts to a total of $698.24 and life insurance endowment plan as always every single month I'm paying for this. So in total this month, my fixed expenses is at $1,402.51. Phone, Spotify, iCloud, installment zero, taxes, giving allowance to my mom, and also a new subscription which is Netflix. So right now in the recent days, you can't actually piggyback along together with another person's subscriptions. Even though you can create the accounts, you need to be of the same household in order to share the same account. So I've dropped off from my brother's subscription and I've signed up for my own which I'm using with my mom and per month it costs $12.98. So that is one new fixed expenses added to my fixed expenses list. Variable expenses this month is at $676.14. So this is the summary table. I'll bring you over to the breakdown later on. You would see that I actually crossed out travel. I spent a total of $867.03 booking for flights, booking for hotels, paying in advance. I'm actually traveling from September onwards and I'm going back to Korea. Some of you have actually commented in my how to optimize for your travel video. One of the guys said, I thought you don't spend a lot every single month. How do you max out the different credit cards to optimize for travel? As I mentioned, travel is a one-time off expenditures. For any one of you out there planning for your own travels, you do know that your monthly expenses will increase as you factor in the travel expenses, your bookings for flight tickets, accommodations, etc. And that is what happened for June. So it's not that I'm spending a lot on my day-to-day -day every single month when I'm here in Singapore, but it's only because of the increase for my travel expenditures. That's why there's an increase. So I did not factor in because it's a one-time thing. So this month, without factoring in travel, I spent a total of $676.14. For those of you who are wondering why did I increase my variable expenses, I'm actually using the UOB combination right now where you can actually put into your 
your UOB1 savings account, transfer in your salary, and also spend $500 on a UOB credit card to get the 3.85%. So that is what I'm doing. That is why my expenses also increase. I know I mentioned don't increase your expenses just to hit this. I did evaluate my past months of expenses and I realized that actually I've increased my variable expenses gradually and it roughly hits around $600 already. So why not just increase it a little bit more, spend consistently $600. It's still quite reasonable if you ask me as an average Singaporean living in Singapore, $600 on my variable expenses is quite achievable. So I don't inflate it quite a bit. I do realize that I can earn the interest of 3.85% just by transferring in money and indicating that as salary. So that is what I've done to get the 3.85%. Social meal outs, work meals, me time and groceries this month, it was a total of $323.50. As I'm filming this today, it is the 30th of June. I'm actually heading out with my family later on for lunch. So probably another $30 will go for lunch later on. But that is an estimate of how much I have actually spent thus far on 30th of June. Social meal out, $270.33. Groceries is at $53.70. And that is quite reasonable if you ask me. $300 for a month expenditure for my meals in Singapore. If you're asking how do I not spend so much, I actually don't eat out a lot. Unless I go out with my family, go out with my friends, then I'll spend. But when I'm alone, I don't tend to spend a lot. Most of the time, I work from home. Most of the time, I settle my meals at home with my mom and she cooks really well so that is a blessing in disguise I guess. Bus and MRT, I'm working from home all the way. I spent a total of $5.38 for my bus and MRT rides. Cab and car is an increase this month. I drove quite a bit this month and I spent a lot for parking. So in total this month was $80.22. Shopping this month was at $62.22 and this made up of things like travel adapters. What else did I spend on shopping? Three things. I spent on essentials on Shopee $39 and the travel adapter for $20. So that was what mix up of the shopping category. And after shopping, I have gifts, which is at $129.09. I had a friend who flew into Singapore and we spent a day out going to the Van Gogh Museum, etc. So that was $129. And for giving is at $10. And business side of it is whatever I buy in relation to the entire YouTube channel. That was $55.73. I bought spare batteries for the camera that I'm using so that as I film, I will just replace with the battery that I've bought. So this was something like an investment to the business and it was at $55.73. If you're curious to what I spent for my social meal out and also groceries, let me just filter for this. If you see the breakdown on my daily expense tracker for my meals out, a lot of it is with my family. I spent some far kwechap at my brother's place nearby and it was at $36.30. Coffee bean for the family, donkey, NTC, scones, family lunch, cold grill, um, different different things so once in a while every single month I try to make time for friends I do meet them once or twice a month on the weekends when I go to church we hang out after then I'll spend as well but most of the time it is meals with family this is what I usually spend on and groceries when I buy bread when I buy pastries just for breakfast at home so I don't really tend to spend a lot if you were to ask me in my own opinion I don't know let me know in the comment section down below how much do you spend for food each month I'm actually quite curious in that area as well so in total that is what I've spent on this month for my fixed expenses and variable expenses this month it was a total of $2,078.65 and my savings rate for this month is actually at 74.6%. I've not actually reported my savings rate for the past few months so if you go to my overview table you can see under the total savings in the months of January, February as I was not in Singapore it was at 40 over percent, March was 50% and then April to June it was roughly about 80% to 74.6% as of June 2023. So this is my entire breakdown for this month. It is interesting to some of you, I do understand nobody has actually shared quite as transparent as I do. I hope with whatever that I'm sharing, it is actually quite achievable for those of you out there who are looking to decrease your expenses. I mean, I'm a real life living example. I work from home, yes, most of the time. I try to cut down in areas where I don't have to spend. I don't dine out at restaurants every other day, but when I do, I do. I do bring my mom up for meals. I do spend time with my family. We go out for meals and good meals at restaurants and it is where I'm willing to spend on. It's a give and take. As I mentioned in my 100k by 27 video, it is money habits that are inculcated in myself over the number of years, which results in my actual spending right as of today. I don't spend on grab rides. I don't spend on taxi rides. I make time to allocate myself for public transportation usage and that is where I can decrease my cap and transportation expenses. That is all for June's Money Diaries. I hope you found this interesting, helpful, more than interesting, helpful. If you have any questions to my expenses, 
answers or you have anything you want to share with me you can leave it down in the comment section below if not there's always Instagram hop on over to Instagram to direct message me I reply you guys quite quickly as well I hope with whatever content that I'm putting out it's interesting to you guys and on the topic of why I would not be having my monthly income anymore I've left my day job don't misunderstand I'm not another YouTuber that's coming full-time on the YouTube space I'm not doing this full-time it will still be a part-time thing for me as I navigate into something else and once that stabilizes and finalizes I will let you guys know on the channel and I'll be traveling for a while to settle some things overseas so that is my plans in the coming months will I still be putting out finance content here yes I will still be to try and help you guys navigate personal finance in your 20s in your 30s it is pretty interesting and it's what I love to put out here so anticipate more exciting content as I have more time to put out more content maybe twice a week that is all for today's video smash the like button share it with someone that you think will help them and I'll see you in my next video have a great week ahead bye bye